Welcome to Mirror and Thread. I'm Jess and I have a little bit of a different type of video planned. So we are gonna go through some different style or fashion hacks. So these are just things that will kind of elevate your outfits a little bit, things that you already have, and just some little tiny styling pieces that I feel like make all the difference in pulling together a full look. So. We're gonna get right into it. I will try to link some things below. If there's anything that isn't linked that you want, just shoot me a comment and let me know because I'm kind of going to be doing this. It's just a little bit different style. So let me know if you see anything else that you need. Okay, starting with my favorite, the beloved front tuck. And if you don't know what this is, it is so simple. It's literally just tucking your shirts and your sweaters and things in a little bit at the front. So if you see, like, if I just have it untucked, it's like, I mean, yeah, it's a cute sweater, it's fine. But for some reason, tucking it in just a little bit just elevates it, and I don't know why. I tend to do just slightly to the left, and you can kind of play with this in front of a mirror and see what you like best. If you like it straight down the middle, a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, I always feel like this feels the most natural to me. The only exceptions being if I'm wearing a belt that I kind of want to show off or like some button front jeans, or if it's a shirt that is kind of like a circle hem, then I will go ahead and tuck it just a little bit in the exact front. So super easy, but there, <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, if you head to my Instagram page, you will probably not find a single photo that I haven't implemented the front tuck on, try on or otherwise. I just love the way that it looks and I feel like it slims the body and is a little bit more flattering. So that's that one. Let me know if you have questions about that one. Next up is another so, so easy trick, but I'm telling you, if you go from this and then you do the front tuck and then you roll up the sleeves, especially in the fall and in the winter, rolling up the sleeves of your sweaters, your cargo jacket, denim jacket, anything that you can, especially if it's something that's oversized, if it's like a flannel top, I always roll the sleeves on that. And for whatever reason, it just looks more put together, especially if you, which I don't have anything on right now, but if you like to wear like layered bracelets or kind of accessorize with different bracelets and rings, I just feel like it gives it just a little bit more oomph and it's so easy and you don't have to buy anything else to make it happen. Okay, next up, for specifically fall fashion is adding a hat. It seems so simple, but I'm telling you, there isn't hardly an outfit in my world right now that I don't think make a hat makes it look even better. So if you just pull this on, you have an absolutely complete outfit and all you did was throw on this hat, I think was like 20 or $30. And there's so many different options. You can do beanies, you can do more like fedora like this. I have some kind of wide floppy hats that are kind of wool that I wear a lot in the fall and in the winter and it just it just adds a little bit more. And I, I once had a, a New Year's resolution to wear more hats and I'm glad that I did because now I'm such a hat person. I feel like they just make me feel put together and I, I love this outfit now and I would totally wear this out as is. Okay, the next tip is how to get away with wearing fall booties with a pair of jeans that doesn't look <laughs> kind of ridiculous, like you have too much material at the bottom. So the best trick for this is to buy ankle length jeans and they are perfect for fall booties. So these are kind of a raw hem, which I actually really like and I will link a couple of different pairs of these, but um, they are the perfect length for these booties, which come up a little bit higher. So these are a little taller of a boot, but I think the ankle jeans makes it perfect. The other option would be to roll your jeans. So if you don't have ankle jeans, then you can just roll them once or twice, which honestly, I'm only 5'3", so pretty much all my jeans get rolled anyways, unless the store happens to have short length. But you can roll them and those look perfectly great with booties. Do not tuck your jeans into your booties ever, not good unless they're tall. So if they're short booty, booties, don't tuck them in. And really with booties um, like straight length or skinny work the best. So probably even wide leg, but probably not like more of a straight leg that you're trying to get inside of the booty, if that makes sense. If you're gonna do more of a wider leg, just leave it where it kind of comes over the booty a little bit. 
Okay, let's talk scarves for just a minute because these are one of my favorite fall winter accessories, but I know they can be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna run through a couple different types. So this is an infinity scarf. This one's actually pretty old, but I will see if I have a similar one. But for the thing for infinity scarves to me is to get them pretty long like this so that you can double them up. So these are my favorite to wear with coats and jackets because they're so easy and they don't feel like a lot of extra bulkiness on your shoulders. So you can just wrap them around and then you are still good to wear your normal coat and they actually provide a ton of warmth for your neck. They also have these, uh, they are called snuds, I believe. So this is like an infinity scarf, only it's really short and kind of wide like this. It almost looks like a hand warmer or something. And this one's old, so it does have a few like pulls in it. But I will show you, this one is the best if you're going for maximum warmth. This is kind of what this looks like. So it's literally just to be warm on your neck. So this one, I prefer the longer ones if you're wanting to make more of like a fashion statement with it. This one, if you're gonna be out walking your dog or whatever, this one is perfect because it's definitely super warm right on your neck. So um, that's how I wear it is you just put it right over the top and it's super easy. And I don't prefer the ones that are infinity scarves, but they're only big enough for one loop. I don't know why those just look a little bit off to me, like they're not thick enough because I like to either be able to double it up or have the really thick right under your neck. So those are just a couple options. And then this is the biggest trend for scarves right now are these like oblong fringe scarves. So they make these in all kinds of different, like this one's pretty thin, but they I also have one that's really, really thick. And basic ways to wear this are just around your neck like this, super easy, or I wrap it one time and only one time and then kind of leave the ends long. So this one is another good one. If you have um, a coat or something else, it's gonna give you a lot of warmth, but I don't tend to wrap it one more time. That just gets to be too much on your neck and it looks a little bit silly to me. So this is how I prefer to wear these and I have a ton of different types of these and I think they're all great options to just dress up an outfit. I haven't even changed what I've been wearing and you've already seen a whole lot of different outfit options just from what I already had. Okay, another trend that's super hot right now is like a midi skirt or midi dress. So the, the ones that come kind of midway to your calf, <laughs> it's about fell over. So there are a couple of tricks to styling these and I had this in a video a while back but you can actually, this one's a dress, but you can actually layer a sweater over these for a whole different outfit. But if you see how it looks right now, it's kind of frumpy. <laughs> like it just makes me look a lot bigger. So you wanna make sure that you're always defining your waist as best that you can. So I just will take the sides of this and kind of tie it up. This one's pretty soft, so it works really well and tie a little knot in it. If you are worried about that not staying because this fabric is kind of soft and it will pull apart pretty easily. So you can grab just one of those clear elastics like for, let me use these in my niece's hair <laughs> last weekend and just kind of make a little bit of a bun right here. And it's kind of just a little knot and you can tuck the bottom under too. And that will stay, but that just kind of gives you a totally different look and then to finish it off, I always roll up the sleeves <laughs> and then you are good to go on a whole entirely different look. And you can do this with graphic t-shirts too. If you want to tie up a graphic tee and wear it with a midi skirt and a cardigan or a jacket or something, just kind of gives you a little bit of a different look rather than everything just hanging down. Okay, I wanted to talk about pattern mixing for just a second because this is my most frequently asked question on Instagram is how to do pattern mixing, what to mix, what's okay, what's not. So basically my, my few tips, and I am not the greatest at pattern mixing, I will tell you, I can tend to keep it pretty subtle, but my basic tips are just keep it super neutral and very like low key as far as the patterns go. So a stripe is always a really easy pattern to mix to me. I consider these completely a neutral. You can pretty much do anything with them. I've even done plaid with stripes, so pretty easy to mix and match. And then camo is another one that's pretty neutral. I actually love plaid and camo together. And you can do this in different ways too. Like you can wear this striped shirt with some camo pants, 
or whatever. I've done that a couple of different times too, and I think it's really cute. So keep it subtle. Another easy one is leopard. So if you've followed me for any amount of time, you've seen plenty of leopard in my wardrobe. And I think that this goes really easily with a lot of different things. I think it goes with stripes and I've done it with plaid. I've done it with a couple of different things. So leopard to me is a neutral. You just want to make sure that you pay attention to the coloring. So if it's like a really bright leopard, then I wouldn't necessarily do another bright pattern. But just like an easy brown and white leopard, I think is pretty neutral. And you can do, especially with shoes, I wear leopard booties or leopard flats with all kinds of different things and all kinds of different patterns up top. And I really consider them to be a neutral at this point. So if you're wanting to dip your toe into pattern mixing, that is where I would start. So it worked out that I had this one planned for right after I was talking about pattern mixing because this is a stripe and a plaid together, which I would totally wear and have worn. But I wanted to show that you can also wear your button down tops or your flannel tops as jackets, especially in the fall or just as a layering piece. So I like to open them up. You can do these with a graphic tee under or a striped tee or just a basic plain white t-shirt or black t-shirt. But it gives you just multiple options for wearing your flannels. I know typically when we think about these, we think of wearing them buttoned up tucked in or um, whatever. And even some of your nicer like work tops I have worn as shirt jackets before. So just gives you a little more wear. Okay, another thing I get asked about a lot, specifically in the summers, is how to wear backless dresses or tops without your bra showing. So this one is has a back cut out and I prefer these sticky bras. So there are a couple of tricks to these. First of all, I will link my ride or die sticky bra it's from target and i have bought a couple of them from other places including amazon and they were horrible they didn't say at all so pay attention to which one you're getting because the quality does make a difference but the trick with these is that you definitely want to get ones that clasp in the center because it's just going to make them a little bit more secure and also isn't going to make you look like <laughs> your boobs are really far apart because no one wants that so um, get the ones with the clasp and then just get the like a little bit higher quality sticky stuff. And the Target one I've had for over a year and I wear the daylights out of them in the summertime and I have not had any problems with them slipping off and slipping out of my dress or anything like that. If you're going somewhere where you're gonna be sweating a whole, whole lot, you might have to pay attention to it a little bit more. But for the most part, I love the way that it looks. And even if like this dress, I probably could have done a strapless dress and just or strapless bra and pushed it up a little bit but it kind of made my back fat stick out a little so these are just a little bit more sleek and I am a size 34b so I don't know what these would be like if you are kind of bustier person so let me know if you have tried them but I do think that they're worth a try because it's really nice to not have to worry about a strap poking out all night. Okay, final one kind of, because this is a little bit of a two-parter, but if you remember the our leggings pants debacle that was going down a couple years ago, and I was always a big proponent that they can be, but you do have to pay attention to what you're doing. So the trick with wearing leggings as pants and making them look where you feel comfortable and your whole booty's not showing, super simple. Make sure that you have something covering your booty for sure from behind, so these long cardigans are really in right now. This one's Barefoot Dreams and it's so cozy and wonderful. And it will cover your booty and be so great. And there's tons of different duster cardigans or oversized sweaters or a long jacket. Any of those things are totally fine to just wear them with sneakers and wear it like a normal outfit, wear them as normal pants. And um, you also want to make sure that you have something that comes down a little bit longer in the front. So this is actually one of our mirroring thread t-shirts that my husband and I designed. So you can check that out, the link in the description too. But these come down a little bit longer and I like to make sure that it's definitely hitting like below, like right at my thighs and not showing any of the things. So I think that when you do those two things, you can totally get away with wearing leggings as pants and you don't have to worry about making anyone or yourself uncomfortable. My other favorite thing about wearing leggings as pants is that they are perfect for tall boots. So if you've been curious about over the knee boots, this is my particular favorite way to wear them. 
is either with a pair of leggings underneath or when it's cold or like a dress or a skirt. So I don't tend to wear these over jeans. Some people do. I find that I kind of have bigger thighs. And so I don't like the way that that looks. I feel like there's like a little, <laughs> a little bit of spillage over my thigh area if I wear them with jeans. So I prefer them with leggings, but I think the leggings are the perfect thing for this. And by the way, this poncho is amazing too, super soft. But you can definitely, these stay up on your legs are the best over the knee boots. They stay up on your thigh and they don't ride down. And you can wear them with dresses and still keep your legs a little bit more warm than if you wore them with booties or heels or something too. Alrighty, I hope that that was helpful for you guys and that those are just some easy little tweaks that you can make to your wardrobe to make you feel a little bit more pulled together. So I would love if you would give this a thumbs up. If you liked it, let me know what you liked and share it with your friends and you can find links for some of the things that I talked about in the description.